The first step that we're going to take to get our authentication system up and running is to install dependencies that we need for our project. And we're going to do this via Composer, which is a dependency manager for PHP. Now don't worry if you've not used Composer before, I'm gonna go through the steps to install it. And then these are the dependencies just here that we're gonna require for our project. And we're gonna go through each one of these and I'm gonna tell you exactly why that we need them. And this will help us later on because it means that we don't have to jump back to Composer and install everything. Normally within a project, what you would do is install them as you needed them. But in this case, we know exactly what we need. So we're going to install them all in one go. So before you get started, really, you want to have a directory in your web server that you're going to have your project within. So mine's just called authentication, but of course, feel free to call it whatever you want. So let's get Composer downloaded so we can use it within our project. This is very straightforward. If you head over to getcomposer.org and hit the download button, we have two commands here that we can run. The first one is if you have curl installed on your system. And the second one is if you don't have curl installed. You obviously will need PHP installed, so I'm guessing you already do. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I actually do have curl installed, so I'm gonna use this first command, but you can use the second if you don't. And all we're going to do is, within this main directory, within a command prompt or a terminal, we're just gonna paste that command in. So once I run that, that's going to download Composer, and we can use this to install our dependencies. So let's open up this directory and see what we have. We have a composer.phar file, and this is a PHP application uh, compiled into a single file. And all this means is that we can run this on the command line using PHP. And that's how Composer is installed. So let's now take a look at the first dependency that we're going to be installing. And that is the Slim framework. And we're installing version two. So this is what our authentication system is going to be based on. And don't worry too much if you've not worked with a framework before. Slim is a very basic in the way that we lay out different routes for our application. And really, once you get into it, it isn't going to be much trouble at all. We're not going to be using too many different helper functions. We're going to be writing pretty much just standard PHP. So don't worry too much about that. So how do we pull Slim into our application? Well, let's just clear the screen here. I'm still within this authentication directory. To run Composer, we run php composer.phar like that. So you can see here we get a list of the commands that we have. But what we want to do is we want to use the require command. So we say php composer.phar uh, require, and then we choose the name of the package. The name of the slim package is slim forward slash slim. So when I hit enter, all that's going to do is it's going to require that into my project, and we'll see that a a composer file has been created to handle these project uh, to handle these um, dependencies and it will have also downloaded the slim files as well so back over to our text editor we can see we've got a composer.json file included and we've also got a composer lock file included uh, we're not going to talk too much about the composer lock file but the json file is basically a list of all the requirements and we will be updating this a bit later on when we auto load our own files into our project. Now the vendor directory contains composers base files here, but it also contains slim, which I've just downloaded. So we have that dependency just in there. So let's move on to the next dependency that we need to install, and that is slim views. Now slim views essentially allows us to use either smarty or twig as our template engine. Usually when you're writing PHP code, you just, uh, you know, output whatever you need to do in the markup and just echo variables or loop through uh, with PHP standard templating, which is just a, an opening and a closing PHP tag and then something like for each or if and end if and end for each. But we're going to be using twig for this. So what we want to do is requiring slim views with composer. So let's do that first of all. So we're going to clear this php composer.phar require slim views and we'll wait for that to download and because we're going to be using twig we also need to install twig so we can go ahead and do this as well 
So we're going to run this, but I'm going to choose twig, twig, like that. And that is pretty much it. So we have slim views, which is uh, the way that we use twig within slim. And then we have twig. And don't worry if you've not worked with twig before, it's pretty straightforward and you will get the hang of it. It's much nicer than just outputting sort of standard PHP within your uh, view files. So we've handled both of them. The next thing that we're going to be doing is installing PHP Mailer. So this is the way that we're going to be sending email within our project. We're going to be hooking this up with SMTP. So we need an email service with SMTP uh, that we can connect to and send emails, which is pretty much all, all mail services. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem. You can, of course, uh, at the end of this series, switch PHP Mailer out for some other email sending service. You might be using something like uh, SendGrid or Mailgun. Uh, but we'll stick with this for now just because it's fairly straightforward and we don't really need to set up any other configuration outside of our project. So let's install this then. So that's php mailer slash php mailer. Pretty straightforward. And once that's downloaded, there we go. So the next thing we're going to install is this config package. Now, Slim 2 does have the ability to define config, but we're going to be doing this in a slightly different way. We're going to have two different files within our project. One is going to be a development configuration and one is going to be a production configuration. And we can create other configurations as well if we need to. But the reason for this is we want a really nice way to create a development configuration file. We want an array in there with all of our different configuration options, so our database, our SMTP settings for our email, uh, session name settings, uh, hashing settings for security. But uh, unfortunately, Slim 2's configuration doesn't quite allow us to do this as nicely as we might want. So we're going to be using this package. So let's require this in, and we'll look at that much later when we look at actually configuration. So let's install this then. So php composer.phar require Hassan Khan config, and that should download. Okay, so the next then is our database support. And we are borrowing Laravel's database component. And the reason we're doing this is because this makes a really nice way to work with models. It works, uh, it gives us a really nice way to just work with the database in general. So we're taking this. It's perfectly acceptable to use this outside of Laravel. In fact, it's been set up so it is easy to use outside of Laravel. So we have the usage instructions here, but we will be going through this exactly how we set this up. So let's require this into our project then. So it is under Illuminate Database. So once that's downloaded, like so, we can move on to the next. So the next uh, big thing is validation. So validation is typically really difficult to do within PHP. And there are so many validation libraries. Uh, but this is one that I created um, really out of the frustration of not being able to customize uh, the way that you set up your validation. For example, throughout this series, we're going to be looking at validating things like whether a username or an email already exists in our database. Now, really, traditionally, that would be really difficult. So, for example, you'd have to create a query to select everything from your database or select the record from your database uh, where an email matches the email that the user supplies when they're registering. And then you have to say to them, sorry, that email is already in use. You can't register with that. Uh, the same with the username, etc. So this violin package um, basically just allows you to easily do that by creating your own validation class. And we'll be looking at exactly how we do that. So let's pull this down. So it's Alex uh, Garrett's violin. That pulls down. Cool. OK, so last but not least, we have randomlib, which is a library for generating random numbers and strings. You might be thinking, well, why are we pulling this in? Surely we can do this ourselves. Well, we're going to be focusing on security within this series. So, for example, when we create the remember me functionality, 
we need a secure way to store a cookie that identifies the user that's to be remembered and then we can look them up and authenticate them so they can be remembered within our application. But randomly generating strings is a very tricky thing to do well. So we're going to be using randomlib to do that for us. And this doesn't just apply to things like uh, remember me functionality. It also applies to resetting your password. And it also applies to things like activating your account. So we send a unique random string through to an email and then that will identify the user. And all of this will be hashed in our database. Now randomlib isn't going to be used for hashing. It's just going to be used for generating random numbers. We're going to be using SHA-256 to hash these random numbers or strings that we generate. And for passwords, we're going to be using the password hashing API. So this only generates random strings for us. So let's pull this into our project. So and there we go. We'll wait for that to download. Okay, so that is finished. Now that is all of our dependencies installed. If you take a look inside of your vendor directory, you can see we have quite a few dependencies in here, some of which are uh, dependencies of the dependencies. So it will have installed more packages than you specified. And you'll also notice that under your composer.json file, we have all of our dependencies just here. Now, because we've been installing these uh, dependencies through the command line in a really easy way, the versioning here isn't quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly modify these and explain why I'm doing so. So for slim, we have a tilde here and then 2.0. That means the next significant release. So tilde is next significant release. You can read about this on the Compose the documentation if you're interested. So for slim views, we're going to change this to 0.1.star. That means that if uh, 0.1.4 uh, or 5 or 6 is released, then we get them when we update our project dependencies. So for twig, we're going to do uh, a next significant release, and we're going to do that on 1.0. For PHP mailer, we're going to do 5.2. For the config, we're going to use 0.8.star. So again, if uh, this is updated, but doesn't go past 8, that will be updated for us. For our database, we're going to have next significant release on 5. And for violin, we're going to say 2.star. For random lib, we're going to just say next significant release 1.1. So now that we've updated these, what we're going to need to do is inside of our terminal, we're just going to run composer.phar update to make sure everything is okay. So there we go, we have nothing to install or update. So really all of this, all this is doing is just making sure that we're pulling in the right versions. What we don't want to do is pull in versions of slim like this. That means that when version three is available and you host your project somewhere and you run Compose it install to install your dependencies, you're going to break your application. So in this state here, we're looking good. So what happens when you do eventually go live with your application and you need to install these dependencies or you just uh, don't have your vendor folder available? Well, when you upload your project, the files you're not going to upload are vendor. So we can delete this folder just now. We're not going to have, uh, I guess we would have composer.lock if we'd already installed our dependencies, but let's remove it for now. So we just have composer.json and composer.phar to actually install these dependencies. But what do we do now? Well, all we need to do is run within this directory, composer.phar install, and that will install all of our project's dependencies for us. That means when you port this code around, you don't have to port around all of these vendor files because that's gonna be a bit of a waste to to move them around with your project. So this is why we are doing this and we're pulling these in to just help us build this authentication system in the best way that we possibly can without having to write all of our own code. For example, security concerns like generating random numbers or strings, validation, which gets really, really annoying, all the hard work's done here for us, database support, 
uh, we can just use this to connect to our database. Configuration is always annoying, so we've got that all sorted. Sending email, this one is debatable. You can send email really however you want, but um, PHP mail is a good way to do this. It's quite a solid uh, code base. And then naturally we just have our framework files here. So really we're not using too many unnecessary dependencies. We're just using things to help us along. We're still gonna be writing all of our own code. So now that we've done that, we are ready to move on to the next part of the video, which is actually setting up the framework. So we're ready to start coding.